it was actually just reported that uh, the Snoop Dogg has acquired Death Row Records. Oh, did he? Yeah, pretty dope, huh? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, considering that's what he came out of and mm-hmm. he had the bad experience, he left, you know, the bad experience, left under bad conditions, mm-hmm. was beefing with Suge forever yeah, yeah. and so forth. And then Suge ends up going to prison and loses yeah. everything and it gets See? auctioned off. And then at long last, it goes full circle and Snoop actually buys it. Yeah, man, this is like connecting to what I was saying before, it's, 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 it's a joy to see Snoop really being who he really is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there, there is a, so there's a persona there that he is, you know, he's evolved. He's, he's really showing you who he is, who he's always really been. There's been a time where he had to, you know, kind of represent that gangster lifestyle as if, um, I think in a way that, you know, it, it kind of was like the entertainer part of it, but showing you who he is, you know what I'm saying? Like this guy who's been in a relationship and he's connected to his parents, where he may have had to kind of speak on the other parts of a society that kind of perpetuates a certain behavior that he's not a part of. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, so listen, when I when I say you know you can step back and see, have you been played by the game, you know? So, you know th- that's a, I would just say that, you know take a take a look at that a deeper look. Yeah, I mean, listen, I interviewed Malik Lee, who was his bodyguard mm-hmm. that was involved in the fatal shooting. Well, you know, you know, yeah. I was trained. Yeah, you guys know each other. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, it's interesting how. Things have, could, could have gone so many different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at life and, and you look at, people like to say it's destiny. People like to say that things are, you know, everyone gets what they deserved or there's some sort of grand plan and all this. But every day, things could go a very different direction. And it doesn't matter how talented you are or charismatic or good looking or smart or whatever. You know, Snoop started out as a rapper in Long Beach, and it just so happened that he was friends with Dr. Dre's stepbrother mm-hmm. and, you know, Warren G. And it just so happened that Warren was at a party and played a tape, and Dre was paying attention. Mm-hmm. I- I- I'm sure people played Dre so many whack demos throughout mm-hmm. the course of his right. life. Yo, Dre, right. listen to this. Yo, listen. Right. Yo, me and my friend, we rap. Yo, you, yo, check this out. And, you know, it's like, oh, God, not this again. Like, you right, know, yeah, I, yeah. I know how many demos people send me, mm-hmm. and I'm not Dr. Dre. Like, you know, like, like people send me so much crap that, you know, it just so happened that that one day he just happened to hear something that, mm-hmm. that caught his ear. Yeah. And then, boom. Next thing you know, he's part of the new death row. And, yeah. and now he's in, you know... You know, one eight seven on a you know on an undercover cop song and you know deep cover and, it and so heard forth. That he's and, a beautiful human being. Yeah, and he's that always too. been. This he's always really been cool. Yeah, chill, and you know, yeah, just lovable guy. The you know this whole murder case that he was involved in, mm-hmm. he could have been found guilty. Mm-hmm. It, it could have gone that way. You don't know how juries go. Mm-hmm. You don't know how 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 these trials you know play out. Yeah. Um. And yeah, you're right. Like I saw. I remember I went to Snoop's. Uh, there was a a party for his documentary mm. and there was, you know, some industry people there and so forth who, you know, were on the red carpet and we were all kind of taking pictures together and so forth. But I saw Snoop wait for an hour and take pictures with every single human being That's that what asked I'm talking him for about. a picture. That's what I'm talking Not about. Not industry people, just fans who managed to get into this party. He That's sat the there and took pictures and was like into it. Was like, yeah, yep. what's up? What's up? You know, like and the that's coolest. That's become his yeah. brand. That's, that's become his so, brand. Yeah, He's the cool dude. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why he has shows with like Martha Stewart. Exactly. And- <laughs> exactly. And so that's what I'm saying. Like I've known these people, and I'm going, wow. You know, like you know, like I said, the first time I hung out with Dr. J at his house, they were having like, like, um, like balloon, uh, water balloon, like contest in the yard and right like this is the most wholesome like andy griffith type of shit like but this is what you know this is what it is like yeah. this is a family cat like there's a lot of folks like that but you know what they they do for a living you know it's different it's entertainment mm-hmm. and it's just you know so it, it it's 
it's interesting, you know. Yeah, by the time this video comes out, he would have done the Super Bowl halftime show. Mm. And just to think, like, yo, like, you started out at the very bottom of society. You're growing up in Compton with a single mother, you know, like, We're barely like- scraping by, don't even have a car. And now you're performing on the biggest stage in the world, the Super Bowl halftime show, along with all the artists that you signed and produced brother, over brother, the years. It's, it's like, you know, it's the reason why I think he and I identify with each other. We may be from those those places, but then we see something, there may be something in us differently that that, that sees a bigger picture and says, you know, I. You know, you're, I'm I'm going to, I see a pathway out of here, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's kind of being somewhat bilingual. And there, there, there are us that basically can go, all right. And you look at it when you, you know, and I tell a lot of, a lot of kids, I do a lot of motivational speaking, is when you combine street knowledge with academic knowledge, you really can't be stopped in, in this world. And uh, even though they think that, you know, being from the hood is a detriment, but you learn character, you learn people's weaknesses, you learn how to uh, navigate, um, you know, more than anyone else that might have had a lot more like money and influence and stuff. So, you know, people like Dr. Dre, people like Snoop, um, Tupac, these things, these are these are people who educated themselves and saw a way out, but they've always kind of been a dichotomy. They've always been bilingual. They can they're just as comfortable in in a, you know a mansion talking to uh, executives as they are in the hood, and that's that's something that I wish for a lot of people to be able to get that that balance, that yin yang. You know? And yeah, I mean, being in the music industry now for. Sheesh, 20 years? This is actually my 20th year. Yeah, I I moved to New York in 2002. This is my 20th year in the music industry. Mm -hmm. The guys who could talk to everyone Mm -hmm. are the ones who really win in the long term. Absolutely. My man Stretch, who used to be a crip, like like who who really like literally talks to can can meet with all the the boardroom guys, Mm -hmm. the the corporate guys or whatever. Look at Sean Combs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Who who has his feet in, in, in everything, who who doesn't just say, I'm only fucking one type of person. I'm going to surround mm-hmm. myself with this type of person. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's all going to be a bunch of dudes who I grew up with and, and mm-hmm. so forth. 